Boot times, boot times, boot times, boot times. Lately, a few people have been asking, how do I get such fast boot times? What do I do to get these boot times? I'm gonna show you guys today. I'm also gonna detail some of the hardware I have to get these fast boot times. But here, let's have a look. What do I do? I press the power button. Uh, boot her up. So here you can see here, guys, there's no fast boot settings enabled, no fancy settings. It's just hit the hit that power button and it jumps straight into Windows. And what happens here, if you guys watch closely, is I have what I call the all black Windows boot. So you see there's no login screen, there's no welcome screen. And it's, in my opinion, it just looks awesome. So I'm gonna teach you guys today how to get this uh, fast boot and what settings I use and what tweaks I use in Windows. And let's get on with it. So I'm gonna be in the bottom right corner here, guiding you guys through this guide. And let's get on with the first part. So I want you guys to click on Start Menu and type in Disk Defrag. And then I want you to click on Disk Defragmenter. So that's right, despite popular belief, SSDs can still suffer from fragmentation. So click here, and as you can see here, mine's 2% fragmented. Look at that. Uh, if you guys, if it doesn't have a percentage here, you can click Analyze Disk, and it'll analyze it for you and then you can click defrag. Now I'm actually not gonna defrag it on this video because it'll interrupt my recording, or I believe it may. So uh, as you can see there, defrag, I want you guys to hit that, defrag your SSD. Um, so that actually helps with boot times. That can help get rid of that uh, annoying Windows logon screen. So next part of the build, uh, next part of the guide, not build, <laughs> I was gonna say. Anyway, uh, advanced system settings, start menu. I want you guys to click on advanced system settings. Click there. And now I want you guys to go to performance. So you can adjust this whichever way you want, but the main thing you want to do is you want to go here to visual effects and go to custom. And you want to at least make sure that aero peak is, is disabled and also transparent glass. These two are the main ones. They do have a little bit of a performance hitch, which can cost you a slightly, or give you a slightly slow boot time. Anyway. Those two disabled are the main things to look out for. You guys uh, feel free to copy my settings if you wish to uh, for this. I've also got a Windows 7 tweak guide, which I will put in the description below for you guys if you wish to check that out. But anyway, let's go on to Advanced tab over here. Now, another important thing you may wish to do is go to Virtual Memory and ch hit Change. Now, this next tip, I only recommend doing this if you honestly have 16 gigabytes of RAM or more. Uh, if you only have 8 gigabytes of RAM or 4 gigabytes of RAM, then you probably don't want to do this. What this is doing is enable is disabling virtual memory, which when your memory gets full, it'll use some of your hard disk to store data on. And you know, it can if you have this disabled and you need more memory, it can slow down your computer quite a bit. But if you've got 16 gigabytes of RAM or more, then you can just hit no paging file. So you just hit it'll have here, this will be automatically ticked. I want you to take off this tick here and then hit no paging file and hit set. And what this will do is this will set no paging file for you guys. And so click apply, click OK. So that's the first two things I want you to do in the performance options. So click OK there. Now the next thing, now the, another important tab here in the advanced tab is startup and recovery. I want you guys to go to settings here. And I want you guys to make sure time to display list of operating systems. I want you to make sure that option is unchecked. So that'll make uh, boot time slightly more faster as well. So I want you to hit OK. Now, the next part is system protection. Now, if you need system protection, then don't do this next option. But for a little bit of a faster boot time, I want you to take system protection off your main boot drive. You can hear, as you can see here, I've got two more partitions here. Uh, they're not my SSD, they're my actual Western Digital hard drives as well. You, I can actually turn um, system protection on for these drives. Uh, I actually don't need system protection as I actually, yeah, I mean, I don't expose my computer to any harmful viruses or anything like that. I've got another machine for doing that. <laughs> but anyway, if you want to turn this off, you can just go click here. It'll have the Windows symbol for your boot drive. Click configure and you can just go turn off system protection. Or you can set it to a lower amount if you wish to. So if you go turn off system protection, click OK. And that will be, that's, so that's it for the system properties there. So we can click OK. That is now finished. And we can go restart later because I ain't finished with this guide yet. So restart later. Now the last part of this guide is I want you to type in here is I want you to go to MS Config. So go to Start Menu. So I'll do that again. Hit Start Menu. Type in MS Config and then click on this here. Now this will bring up System Configuration. So actually we've got another tip after this as well. But 
this is the second last tip anyway. So we're going to go to the boot tab up here. And then we want to go no GUI boot. We want to make sure that is ticked. So basically this is the most essential um, option for getting that all black boot screen. Uh, what this does is disables the Windows start boot up fancy start thing. So that'll get rid of that and also give you a slightly faster boot time as well. Next thing I want you to do is go to services and click hide all Microsoft services as generally the Microsoft services are important for your system to even run. So you click hide all Microsoft services, go to running and you can check out which services are running. As you see here I've disabled uh, three services here, the Adobe uh, Acrobat services which I don't need and also my Qualcomm Ethereos killer service which I don't need as well. Uh, the Steam client service, I do keep that running as I find if I disable it, it actually messes with my games and with Steam when I want to play. So next, uh, so once you've done that, once you've disabled all the services you don't need, you can then go to startup and do the same for this. Disable all the programs that you don't need. And as you can see here, I have quite a few programs that are not running. I've disabled my uh, Realtek, that's a not noticeable one. I've also disabled my Qualcomm and my Logitech web webcam software, as well as all these Adobe startup and update services, the programs that sort of lead to an update service. So I want you guys to do that and click OK. Now the not last part, so exit without restart again. Now the last part of the guide is going to be the command prompt. So I want you to go to the start menu, type in command, go to command prompt, right click on it and go run as administrator. So this is pretty important, you've got to run it as administrator. If you don't run this in administrator, this next tip won't work. And I want you to type in here, I want you guys to type in power cfg slash h off. So what this will do is this will turn off hibernation, which will free up SSD space. So will system protection as well if you free up, if you take off system protection. And basically this just helps um, create less of a load on Windows when it's first loading up. So that'll help slightly with boot times as well. Uh, anyway, that's it for the guide. So that's the last part. That's the last step of the guide finished for you guys. And I'll pull up to the big screen here. So I hope you enjoyed this guide. Now for hardware. Hardware is crucial, of course. The faster your hardware is, the faster your boot time is going to be. Uh, so if you have, for me, I have a 4670K running at 4.6 gigs. However, keep in mind that even my Intel 3570K uh, at auto, so at 3.4 gigs with a Corsair 4.3, I still managed to get the all black boot screen. So hardware is important, but it's not. you don't need the fastest machine on earth to get an all black boot screen. So if you guys have a 3570K, even a four, even like an FX 6300 uh, clock to 4 gigs should be capable of getting the all black boot screen. Uh, an SSD is crucial though, you will need an SSD to get that all black boot screen. I haven't done it on my hard drives yet. Um, maybe an, maybe four of them raided, RAID 0 together might be capable, but I don't know. Anyway, I've put my hardware in the description below for you guys. I've also put a link to my Windows 7 tweet guide for you guys. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, I'll be coming back to you guys with some more awesome videos. And if you have any qu questions or comments, please leave a comment in the comment section below. And I'll catch you guys soon. Sorry, I had to remake this video as I remade it. I made it before, but it had audio issues. Um, when I was when it was rendering the video. Anyway, guys, peace out for now. Bye.